Hello friends, George Creamer. I'm a trainer in missional leadership. I hope you enjoy this video on the fivefold ministry from Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, if you would like more training on uh, either evangelism, discipleship, or church planning, you can visit our website at senttotheworld.org. You can also check us out on social media outlets. God bless. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 12. During his earthly ministry, Jesus perfectly modeled for his disciples each of the fivefold giftings of apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher. The church now is gifted with these ministries to equip and edify the body so it can be an extension of his fivefold work in establishing Christ's kingly rule in the world. The church is empowered through the Holy Spirit by way of these ministries, providing it with all the necessary tools to fulfill God's mission of salvation and liberation from the powers of sin, evil, disease, and death. It is through the fivefold ministries that God's elect people can make God's presence a reality within the body. And now the church invites others to receive renewal, healing, and restoration. So as I describe each call of either apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, or teacher, keep in mind the original purpose of God that I just described for gifting the church with these ministries. Let's start first with the apostle, the one who is sent. Apostles extend the gospel and plant churches. They ensure that the faith is transmitted from one context to another and from one generation to the next. They are always pushing into new territory, thinking about the future, bridging barriers, establishing the church in new context, developing leaders, uh, networking translocally, and coming up with new and innovative means to do kingdom work. They have the capacity to connect and influence different localities and people at the same time. Some of the key words to describe an apostle are visionary, um, another key word is pioneering, new initiatives, expansion. Some biblical examples are Peter, uh, John, Paul in Acts, Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, some other examples that we might see in the secular world or even in ministry are entrepreneurs, explorers, church planners. The core question that the apostle asks are, what are opportunities to take the gospel into unreached areas? The main interest of the apostle are dreaming, uh, new and challenging tasks, starting new things, and expanding the kingdom. The shadows of immature apostles, okay, they can be known as a bulldozer. If apostles focus solely on initiating new ideas and rapid expansion, they can leave people and organizations wounded or uncared for. Apostles typically welcome change and risk much more than most and can run too fast or too far ahead of the flock, leaving them behind or leaving a mess in their wake. They have difficulty discerning which innovative ideas are from God and which ones are more personal ambitions. The constant flow of new and inventive ideas leads them to try out something new every week never really developing any of their plans and jumping from one project to another. After a while, people stop following them because they have a hard time staying focused on the task at hand and people refuse to give their time and energy to something they know could change at any moment. It's discouraging. What they need from the other gifts. The shepherding and teaching functions are needed to ensure people are cared for and discipled rather than used or drug along behind the boat. The prophet function is needed to ensure we are hearing from God and not acting in our own strength. The evangelist function is needed to remind the apostle that expanding into new territory begins with sharing the gospel with individuals and inviting them to respond. The apostle can be so focused on the big picture that it forgets the trees. It, it forgets about the individual souls that we need to be sharing the gospel with when going into new territory. 
prophets, the one who knows. They prioritize listening to God's voice and serve as his mouthpiece, revealing God's will to his people. They are attuned to God and His truth for today and are fervent in calling God's people to repentance and to walk in holiness. They question the present state of affairs, bringing correction and challenging the corrupt and oppressive systems in society, insisting the community turn from their error and obey what God has commanded. Key words for prophets are truth, holiness, repentance, obedience, revelation, uh, he's a, he or she is an agitator, a questioner. Biblical examples, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Anna, and Simeon in Luke chapter 2, John the Baptist in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, and Stephen in Acts 7. Other examples in society are activists, reformers, politics, public speakers. Core question, are the people of God hearing His voice and responding appropriately? Main interests include being alone and reflecting on the scriptures, waiting and listening to hear divine revelation, and calling people to heed God's voice and obey. Shadows of immature prophets. They can be known as jerks. Immature prophets assume they are always right. The problem is often that they are right, and this builds a false sense of confidence that they get it right 100% of the time. Because of this, they can become arrogant or unwilling to listen. In contrast, a mature prophet should be humble, realizing that any revelation they receive isn't their own. Prophets can be perceived as complainers or belligerent activists, unable to be tactful when delivering a message. They also spend significant time disengaged from others in an attempt to hear the voice of God. This may cause them to be disconnected from everyday realities and can become otherworldly, unable to identify with others. What they need from the other gifts. The apostle protects the people against false messages and assures the prophet is edifying the body toward Christ-likeness. The evangelist lifts people up with good news and reminds them of God's grace and forgiveness. The shepherd and teacher are needed to ensure that truth is applied and people are compassionately led toward growth and obedience, rather than feeling scorned or barked at. Evangelist, the one who recruits. These infectious communicators of the gospel recruit others to the cause. They call for a personal response to God's redemption in Christ and also draw believers to engage the wider mission which produces growth in the church. They have insight into how to articulate and relate the gospel to unbelievers, and enjoy spending time with non-Christians. Often, they remind other Christians that there are non-Christians still out there in the world that need to be reached. They have dynamic personalities and are able to attract people, and wherever they go, they seem to draw others into a discussion about Jesus. They are not timid about their faith and seem to easily share it with others regularly. Keywords for evangelists non-Christians, recruiters, conversations about Jesus, response. Biblical examples, the 12 in Matthew 10, the 72 in Luke 10, the scattered in Acts 8, verse 4, Philip in Acts 8, 12, and I like uh, the verse in Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 15. Other examples, salesmen, politicians, public relations, reps, recruiters. Core question, are new people hearing the gospel and entering into the kingdom of God. Main interest, discussions with non-Christians, sharing their point of view, inviting outsiders, and expecting a response from others. Some of the shadows of immature evangelists is they can be known as uh, celebrities. Their attractive personalities can draw people to follow them instead of Christ. Also, they may present a narrow gospel, that is all about getting people out of hell. When they do this, they make faith in Christianity all about the afterlife and little to do with life transformation in the present. Oftentimes, once an individual accepts the message and receives Christ, they move on to the next person, neglecting the essential next step of short and long-term discipleship. 
Evangelists can also be so focused on reaching those outside the church that maturing and strengthening those inside is overlooked. What they need from the other gifts. The shepherd and the prophet are needed to ensure the church does not neglect the growth, maturity, and care for already believers. The teacher is needed to help explain the gospel, helping people to understand its scope, and to disciple new believers toward maturity. The apostle is needed to see the big picture of the mission and to help maintain balance between addressing the inward and outward needs of the church. Shepherds, the one who cares. Shepherds nurture and protect with a compassionate heart and are able to empathize deeply with others. They get burdened by others' problems, are good listeners, and are easy to talk to. And it's easy to share deep feelings with them. As caregivers of the community, they focus on the protection and spiritual maturity of God's flock. They cultivate an environment that is conducive to developing disciples where new believers can grow spiritually. They tend to spend most of their time walking patiently with other Christians as they grow in Christ-likeness. And they are able to connect people together. Key words for shepherds. Care counsel, empathy, encouragement, protector, humanizer, social cement. Biblical examples, we have Barnabas in Acts 15.36, James, the brother of Jesus, and also the roles of elders and overseers in the New Testament. Other examples are chaplains, counselors, social workers, and those in caregiving professions. Core question, are the people of God caring for and showing compassion for people? Main interest, one-on-one -on -one chats, showing hospitality, and walking with others. Shadows of a immature shepherd. Shepherds like to be with people in the midst of their brokenness, pain, and suffering. However, they can have a difficult time in moving people from that stage to one where they are moving forward in healing and transformation. They will let people sit in their brokenness far longer than they should. Immature shepherds sometimes don't have the confidence to challenge people to move forward for fear that that person will be angry with them. Immature shepherds may also value stability and the support of members to the detriment of moving the mission forward. What they need from the other gifts. The apostle and evangelist are necessary to keep a forward momentum. The prophet is needed to ensure that truth is being spoken and people are called to repentance, even when it's hard. The teacher is needed to help explain and apply the truth of scripture, guiding others in growth and healing. Teachers, the one who explains. Teachers enjoy spending time studying and reflecting on scriptures, seeking understanding so they can pass on their insights to others. They get excited about taking difficult passages and communicating deeper truths in a simple and clear fashion. As communicators of God's truth and wisdom, they help others remain biblically grounded to better discern God's will. They encourage the community to remain faithful to Christ's word and help others transition from having only head knowledge to uh, application. Key words, explainers, communicators, wisdom, scripture, translator. Biblical examples, Apollos in Acts 18, Philips in Acts 8, Priscilla and Aquila in Acts 18. Other examples, professors, trainers, teachers, and coaches. Core question, are the people of God immersing themselves in scripture and applying it? Main interest, Studying the Bible, explaining, and helping others understand and discovering how it applies to everyday life. Shadows of an immature teacher that can be known as Pharisees. Scripture can be the end rather than the means to a relationship with God and neighbor. They can idolize Scripture and put it over intimacy with the living and breathing God. They may value head knowledge over life transformation, leaving learners stunted in development. The focus becomes knowing rather than doing. They can fall into only thinking abstractly about difficult concepts without incarnating it into everyday life. Immature teachers can selfishly attempt to impress others by showing them how much they know rather than crediting the authority that is given from Scripture and the Holy Spirit. 
what they need from other gifts. The shepherd is needed to ensure that the truth of Scripture is used for growth and relationship, not just knowledge. The prophet helps the community to hear from the Spirit what the Scriptures are saying, rather than approaching it like a book of knowledge or history. The apostle and evangelist functions are needed to ensure that the gospel is going forward and new places and people are being reached. So in summary, the fivefold gifts given to the church are for one, to edify and build up the body of Christ, and two, to continue the mission of God in the world. But to fully develop these gifts, the body has to be working collaboratively, respecting and including each gift. Let me close uh, with a quote from Alan Hirsch, who is a pioneer in missional leadership. Because they operate within a system, each individual apes function enriches, counterbalances, and corrects the particular bias of each of the others. In fact, each function actually needs the others to be itself. Thanks for watching this video. My name is George Creamer, and if you're interested in uh, taking training on missional leadership, please visit the website senttotheworld.org, and you can also visit us on uh, our social media outlets. God bless.